I don't know what tests the God's putting you through right now, but I know this, God does test us. God does test us as believers this morning. Are you passing the test? Whatever it is, amen? So what we're going to do this morning, I'm going to read the passage in James, and um, James uh, chapter 1, and I want you to follow along if you could uh, in your Bibles, James chapter 1, and I'm going to read down to verse 12. Verse 12 is kind of a I call it a pivot passage, so to speak, because when you look at the book of James, the first part is really geared on the side of the trials and those kinds of things, the testings. And then when you get past verse 12, it kind of switches up a little bit, and it's now the temptation, uh, the temptations of sin and so forth. So, and the Bible uses the word tempt in both ways. And uh, it's just a simple matter of understanding the context of the passage and understanding. But I felt it was instrumental to keep the, this passage, which I call a pivot passage, so to speak, in verse 12 as part of our text this, this morning. So let me read the passage and um, we'll pray. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, my brethren... Count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Verse 7, For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of a low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low. Because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for your word. Thank you, Lord, for uh, your blessings. Thank you, God. I just thank you for salvation. Thank you for health and strength. Thank you for, yes, we do have liberties, Lord God. And Father, we just do pray today, Lord God, that... Uh, Lord, you would just give us the strength we need. Lord, I don't know what each and every one listening to this message is going through, but you do. And I know the Holy Spirit of God can take your words, Lord, and apply them to each and every individual situation. And we thank you for that work of the Holy Spirit. We pray, Father, you would just comfort and strengthen those, Lord God, uh, that are under the sound of this message we pray especially for those who might not know you as Savior. Help them to come and understand what it means to be saved, Lord. Touch their hearts. Open their eyes to the gospel. So, Lord God, now bless. May we bring honor and glory to you, and we'll give you all the glory and praise, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You, I was going to, you may be seated. Yeah, there's nobody here. <laughs> Just two people here. Amen. Helping me out here. So this, this, this passage of Scripture is just, how can I say it, loaded with truth. And I'm going to try to do my best to bring out these truths to help you understand some very important things. And I, I, I think what I find as pastor is when some people come to know Christ as Savior, I, I, I think we may, I, and I don't think this happens purposely by those who, who lead people to Christ, or the preachers, but sometimes we get this impression that now that I'm saved, no trouble. Trouble is all gone. No more trials. Nothing. No, 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 no. Um, we are still facing trials. We are still fa facing tests in life. And it happens to everybody. 
in life. We all, we all face these challenges here. And uh, so in this, there are some very tough passages, and I want to say here, and I'm trying to be, how can I say it? I don't want you to think that I have gone through, how can I say it? I have experienced everything, and I know how you feel and what you're going on, what's going on in your life, and how you, you know, all, I don't know all of that. But I know this, the principles I'm going to give you from the Bible will apply to your situation, whatever it may be. And that's the beauty behind the scriptures. It works for everybody, okay? So if we can just take the basic principles of this passage, apply them to our situation, we'll get the help we need, okay? And that's the key that we need this morning. It, it's not that I'm standing here saying, oh, come on, get over what you're going through, and, you know, let's, let's move on. Well, no, no, listen, can, can we learn from the passages the things that God wants us to learn, and can we apply these truths in our lives this morning to help us in our trials and testings that God allows in our life? So this is the key here, and uh, so it's very, very important here. Let me just quote something. Amy Carmichael said this in Candles in the Dark. The best training is to learn to accept everything as it comes, as from him whom our soul loves. The tests are always unexpected things, not great things that can be written up, but the common little rubs of life, silly, silly little nothings, things you are ashamed of minding at all, yet they can knock a strong man over and lay him very low. How about that? We, you know, so you think maybe I'm going through something big this morning compared to who, okay? And then you think, well, this is nothing. You're, you're wrong. These are all tests. These are all tests. And you may think, oh, that's just a little thing. Hey, that could knock you down. This can take you down as a Christian. We're not saying a loss of salvation, but get out, you know, knock you down out of the race, so to speak. And um, so we need to be careful, Amen. So, and again, we need to make that distinction, as I've already alluded to, because verse 12 is like a pivot passage, I call it, where you can apply it to the temptations to sin, which follows verse 12, or the first part from verses 1 through 11 about the trials and testings of life, okay? Because we see the word temptation uh, used there in verse 2, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall in diverse temptations. So someone may say, well, how, you know, you're, you're telling me that that's how it's used. Very simple example, if you weren't with us at the 10 o'clock Sunday school hour that I taught the lesson on Abraham and Isaac, let me just quickly give you the references, and what I'll do is I'll read what the Old Testament says, and again, you just got to understand, there's no contradictions in the Bible, we just, they can be resolved, these quote-unquote apparent contradictions. In Genesis 22, verse 1, keep your place in the James passage, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. The word tempt is used there. So you may say, well, wow, it's a God, you know. And especially when you read in light of James 1, reading on like verse 13 down, you think, well, God, it must be a contrary. that God cannot be tempted with any evil and so forth. But when you go to the Hebrews 11 passage, again, keep your place in James. We'll come back there. So God says the word tempt. And then you read in Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11, the previous book, the Bible says in verse 17, by faith, Abraham, when he was what? Tried. So God explains to us, so you got to understand, sometimes the word tempt or tempt to take the temptations can be used in the context of testings and trials of life. So you need to understand that. If you don't understand that, you'll get really confused, okay? So this first part from verses, back to James, from verses 1 through 11 is all about the trials of life. That's the basic context of that, the testings and trials of life. And like I said, when you go past verse 12 into verse 13, then you, he begins to talk about sin and the temptation of sin and lust, okay, which is different. And the three different uh, avenues of that temptation are the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. We know that in 1 John 2, verses 15 to 17. So, so and again, the pivot verse, I think you can swing it both ways. You can swing it on the trials testing side. Let me read it to you, verse 12, and we'll come back to it at the end of the message. 
Blessed is man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. And again, so this is one of the many crowns that the Lord specifically mentions. And uh, he says, you'll receive a crown of life if you endure this. So in the trial side of things, if you endure it in the sense, listen, allow this to build your faith. Allow this to cause you to be perfected, as we'll see in a few minutes. Or on the testing side of temptation, into sin side in verses 13 down uh, down there uh, into verse 21 what happens is you can say this you resist that temptation to sin and God says hey listen I want you to know something and you know what the basic commonality between both of them is this at the end of verse 12 do you love God do you love God do you love God and we saw that with Abraham this morning concerning his son Isaac so what we're seeing here in this first chapter, in this first section, is about trials, trials. And what we'll see here is the wisdom aspect that the Lord mentions in verses 5 and 6. Um, or, you know, how can I say, especially verse 5 there, is really in context connected to the trial, but yet we can take that passage and say, God, I need wisdom in any situation, amen? But really in context, it's about your trial that we're supposed to go to God on. And say, God, I need some help here, amen? So, so let's start in verse 2 here and get right into the meat of the message here this morning. So, and what it is is there's, uh, the Bible says, my brethren, count it all joy, and notice the word when, not if. Some people think if, um, if I, no, when ye fall into diverse temptation. So that's very, very important. It's not if, it's when. In other words, it's going to happen. It's going to take place. And he says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So the Lord is trying your faith. That's what he's doing. And he says the, the produce or the production or the fruit of that should be patience. Okay? So God is trying your faith. Okay? And... And that's supposed to, the outworking of that should result in patience. And let, and we'll talk a bit more about that, and let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So let's get into these first three verses, verses 2, 3, and 4. Again, very powerful, challenging verses, not questioning that at all, you're, whatever you're facing this morning. He says, count it all joy. I think that is a tough one right there. Count it all joy. Amen. And, and so whenever I see the word count, what you'll find out is in the Bible it's used in an accounting, um, it, it's using accounting terminology. So for instance, uh, the Bible says we've been accounted because we have received Christ as Savior and God has for our faith, we've exchanged, and God has given us salvation. And what happened is, in God's record books, he's made some adjustments, and he said, okay, that person by faith received my son, Jesus Christ. Now I've put an entry in the book. He's made some accounting entries. Now the debits and the credits balance out, amen, and you are saved. Um, you may say, well, is it my righteousness? No, it's not. It's still his righteousness. It's still the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It's never your righteousness. Amen. It's never mine. It's his. When God looks at me, he's accounted me. Amen. In him that I'm saved. The Bible says that we're, we're in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Another passage in the Bible. That's an accounting term. And what it is is I'm not in heaven, but yet, again, that reciprocal indwelling. He's in me. I'm in him. God's accounted me in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And there's a few other things in God's terminology that he uses this. So he says, count it all joy. Amen? Count it all joy. He says, and notice he says, when you, what? When ye fall into diverse temptations. Notice the word fall. Fall is, is, is something that is sudden. It's not something that happens little by little. It's, it's something that takes place immediately. It's, it's not step by step, little by little, but it's like head first, bang, you fall down. Amen? Um, 
I, was, I remember in the wintertime, um, the Lord provided a camera for me. So I thought, I'm going to go, and I'm going to take some pictures of the sunrise on uh, Second Lake. Second Lake, trying to get all these lakes. There's four lakes, first, second, third, and fourth. So anyway, so I went. It was fresh snow. I said, oh, I want to get some pictures. I haven't done this ever that I ever remember of fresh snow in the woods. So I'm going down to the path. I brought the car, parked there, and then I got, and, and um, so I'm starting to walk. I got the camera. I took it actually out of the camera bag. Not a good thing. I didn't realize it. So I took that out, and then I had my cell phone on me, and I was trying to learn some things about photography. So I'm going at the crest of this hill, and it's straight, not straight down like that, but kind of a very steep incline. Little did I realize there's ice under that fresh powder snow. It's different. I used to do a lot of skiing years ago. And you know what? That's not a real big problem other than, yeah, if it's an ice base, it's not the best skiing conditions. But I can manage that uh, going down a hill. But at that time, and I didn't have any cleats on, big mistake there, I end up falling all of a sudden. I'm down, and I landed. And I didn't hit my head, but I went hard on the ice on my back. It literally knocked the wind out of me. And I go, oh. and the camera, it was on my chest. My cell phone got buried in the snow, but praise the Lord, it was it's water resistant and it didn't get damaged. And I'm fishing for that. <laughs> and I get my breath and I get up, but it was all of a sudden, it wasn't little by little. I mean, it's a bang, fell, I fell down. That was the first time in years I ever fell like that. I mean, wow, whop, right on the ice. Ooh, that was, anyway. So you know what? That's what the Lord is saying. You fall into divers temptations, amen? And he says this, not only that you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, the trying of your faith worketh patience, 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 patience. Diverse temptations, interesting word. If you do the root study of that word and you go back to the text and everything, you know, I, I like doing etymologies, but if you did the study on this, you would find out that that word comes, from that word we get the same word polka dot. <laughs> interesting. Polka dot. What does that, and this diverse temptation, polka dot, what are you talking about? So, what it is is life is spotted and things are spattered with trials in life of all sizes and shapes, amen, just like polka dots, so here and there, amen. And um, so anyway, and what it is is God, God, what he does there is he has, he allows these things to take place, and God is trying our faith, amen. He's trying our faith, and the ultimate goal is the outworking of that patience, so, and the word, how can I say it? Trying itself is an interesting word. That same word there, if you study that word, you'd find out that when you do the study of that word of the trying, what it is is it's like a stamp or seal of approval. If you study the Greek culture, what they used to do is when, when, when they would make these pieces of pottery, Okay, and what they did was they unearthed some of these things and they found this Greek word on, on the bottom. I think it's called dokimos or something like that. And they had that word. You said, what's that all about? Whenever you go out and buy something, um, well, you, you'll find a, a, in Canada, ULC. ULC is Underwriter Laboratories of Canada. And the other is ETL, Edison Technical Labs. Uh, my son-in-law used to work for Intertech that had it. They, have, they, 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 they are the ones that are involved in ETL, and it's on everything. And what it is is it's been tested. It's been tried, amen? So what the Greeks would do is, um, you know, they had a piece of pottery that went through the furnace, and if it went through the furnace without cracking, they would put those words on the bottom, dokimus. They would put that on the bottom of the thing, and you can be guaranteed it didn't crack. Oh, 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 when I saw that, and I thought, you got to be kidding. Oh, boy, you know what? When you're going through trials, sometimes people do literally crack up. Serious. It's just like, the Lord uses that as an illustration. How about that? You know? And, you know, especially with what we've been dealing with. You know, all you got to do is read Jeremiah 18 and 19. It talks about the potter and the clay and all that and all the different aspects. You read that sometimes. 
But the Bible says that what is the Lord trying to do in this whole process of the heat? And he doesn't want us, he doesn't want any cracks. Amen. He wants us to go forward. Amen. And he's trying, what he's trying to do is conform us to the image of Jesus Christ, his son, in Romans 8, 29. Amen. That's what he's trying to do. That's what he's trying to do to us. So he says again, uh, notice that it is the faith that is tested. It's the trying of your faith. Whatever trial you're going through, it's the trying of your faith. Faith is tested. It, faith is tested through trials. It's not produced by trials. How do you get faith? The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. That's how you get your faith. What God's doing is he's testing your faith. That's what he's doing. And so he says, and, and it's supposed to work patience. What's that? Trials. Listen, uh, what it is is trials don't produce faith, but when trials are received with faith, it produces patience. Amen? It's supposed to be the product of times of trial. When I go through things, I don't know about you, when you're going through a trial, isn't one of your thoughts, I wish this would get over with. Amen? I want it done. I want it finished. I don't know, Lord, how long, how long, Lord, how long is this going? That's what we've been saying for the last 15 months or 16, whatever it is. Amen? Oh, Lord, when's this going to get over with? Well, it may not be over with for whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Amen? And you, if you want to call that a trial, you can. I'm not saying it isn't. And, but what God is saying this, what we're supposed to do is, that's why he exhorted us to count it all joy. Count it all joy. That's supposed to be, if you have your faith, if you have the faith, that's the proper response to the trial, counting it a joy. And I'm going, wow, I, I got to work on that one a bit. <laughs> you know, we can all talk about, you know, our different trials, but man, I look at some of the things that people are going through, and I say, that's what the Bible says here. He says, count it all joy. Count it all joy, he said. And that's supposed to be our response. That's faith's response to the trial. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 tells us this, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh what? Patience. Hmm. See, I'm just giving you the Bible. You can't say, well, you don't know what I'm going through. I probably don't know what you're going through, but I'm trying to help you with the Bible to get some help in these trials and tests of life. I didn't say they were easy, but God, this is what God's telling us this morning. Amen? This is what God's telling us. And he says this, notice this, but he says, uh, it worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work that uh, that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing amen what does god want us to do he wants us listen he wants us to allow patience we're not letting patience have its perfect work in our life amen that's we need you know what we need to do we need to cooperate we need to give in we need to allow it to do its job listen you know one of the and again, I'm not, we're, I don't want to compare anything here, but I have met people that haven't been through a lot, so to speak. We've all been through something. It's just that sometimes, like I've already read, read to you by Amy Carmichael's first, the quote I gave you, we think, oh, that's just a little thing. But that could break you. You think that little thing is not that, that's that big. But some people, in their eyes, they think they haven't been through any big things. And as a result, sometimes we speak very proudfully about our walk with Christ. And, but yet they haven't, they've been tested, but maybe not in the same way that someone else has. I think we need to be careful what we say and what we do and how we conduct ourselves and how we respond to people that maybe, you know, they're going through something and the ones that are looking at it are saying, come on, get over it. Listen, we need to be compassionate and understanding because we've never sat where they sat. You know, I remember years ago, Jack Kyles, what he would do is, on certain days of the week, he would, um, he had uh, people that were deaf in the church, he had people that were blind, and people that were, had no uh, legs, and, you know, had different disabilities or challenges, and what he would do, he was purposely in the house, and he would, he would go, like, maybe one day, or for so many hours, he'd blindfold himself and tried to simulate, even though he couldn't, 
And he tried to simulate these conditions on different weeks as the weeks went by to try to get some empathy and understanding and, and try to, you know, have more compassion for those people who are going through these things in life who maybe were born this way or maybe due to an accident or some big trial in their life, this, this disability or this, this challenge came to their life, amen? And you know what? We need to have more compassion. We need to have, we're not endorsing any sin or wickedness. We're just saying, be more compassionate and understanding, amen? And we all have that struggle. But he says, let it, let it, let it. And what it is is, so the joy, he says, count it all joy. So what's that mean? Listen, so these are these three attitudes that we need when we're going through the trials. Count it all, don't deny the pain and sorrow you feel in the trial. Don't deny it. Amen. You, think, you know what? Some, some of us have been thinking, is this, are we dreaming what's just taking place the last 15 months? No, we think, you know, is this a dream? Is this a nightmare or something? What's going on? Is this real? It doesn't seem, it's just, you know, it's real. It's real. Amen. And, and, uh, you know, don't, don't deny. Amen. Um, don't deny it. Amen. And the thing is this, you know what? The Lord says, hey, listen, count it all joy. Count it all joy. And then knowing, and the, the other thing is this, you know what? God's allowed it to take place. So there's a purpose behind it. I, you know, it, listen, there are things that we uh, are the consequences of sin, which is the, the, from verses 13 down, amen, there is consequences to sin. And, and sin itself brings its own consequences. You know, the Bible tells us that in those passages, verses 14 and 15. So it may be something's going on in your life without getting to that part of the, uh, the chapter because you're, you're reaping something you sow. But if it's not that, trials come to everybody. For whatever reason, God has something for you to learn. Uh, uh, there, he's designed them, amen, for good, not evil. I think of Joseph. In our Genesis study, we will in time. I mean, we're not even halfway through the book yet. Uh, we're just in chapter 22, but we'll, we'll be coming up to this in, in some chapters down the road here about Joseph. And in Genesis 50, verse 20, you know what? I mean, Joseph went through some terrible things by his brothers, and again, there was jealousy, and yes, he was a favored son, and we understand all those dynamics. But man, they, they tried to get rid of him. Amen. They wanted rid of him. And the Bible says, and, and what's, what's amazing, Joseph went through so much, so much. And here was his attitude mentioned a couple of times. I'll just quote Genesis 50, verse 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring it to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. God had a purpose in that for his suffering. Well, I don't understand it. You say, I don't understand that. God knew what he was doing. He allowed that to take place in Joseph's life to get him to Egypt and ultimately save his family. God, listen, no matter, God can do it any way he, he wants to do it because God made a promise that, hey, listen, his seed would be blessed. You have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and God made a promise someday. The Messiah would come, amen? God could preserve. God could do that. He could use whatever means, and sometimes the means he uses is not the means we like. We think, oh, I don't like that. And you, maybe you don't see the big picture in this situation. Maybe there's something else. Maybe you won't see it till years later. Sometimes we got to go through it, and then as time goes on, we look back and you say, and we don't want to dwell on all the past, but we should learn from it. And we may say, now I see. Amen? Now I understand. Maybe you won't ever understand. I don't know. And uh, so, so it's important for us. And Romans 8, 20, and we know all things work together for good to them that love God. See the connection with love. We mentioned that in the Sunday school class in Genesis 22. We see that in verse, at the end of verse 12, uh, he says that crown, he promised to them that love him, love, love. And what will get you through the trials of life is your love for God. And what will get you through the, the temptations of sin of this world, the flesh and the devil, is going to be your love for God. Either way, it's the love, your love for God. You love him? Do you love him? Amen. And he says, if you love God, you'll, you'll begin to see the purpose. The problem is we don't see the purpose because we really don't love God as we ought to. 
And that's something we need to grow in, amen? We all need to grow in that. So, so what if you don't see his purpose? That's why God put verses five through eight there. Say, I don't see his purpose, and I don't know about this thing, counting it all joy when I fall into divers' temptations. Oh, you know, I don't know about wanting that stamp of approval on me, you know. <laughs> i got to go through all this stuff. Look at verse 5. So the Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, let us ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and abraineth not, and it shall be given him. So what it is is trials... Uh, okay, bring us into this aspect that we need to, according to the context of this passage, we need to ask God for wisdom. We need to turn, amen? You say, I, I, you know, like for instance, some of us, we have knowledge. You know, I got verses that I've memorized, and I know this, and I know that. But what it is is, it's in the head, but wisdom is the practical application of this knowledge, we need that application. So how do you apply it? Facing trials. <laughs> That's one way. You know, it's just like the people in the trades. We have a guy in our church, and, and he, he qualifies, makes sure that the people that are working uh, in their trade skills, uh, whether they got the hours, and then they got to have the in-class time, and when they've reached these, these areas where they've reached those qualifications, amen, um, then... Uh, and, and you know, they get their certificate. They get their red seal in Canada. I don't know what they do in the States, what they call it there. But in the process of getting these, these certifications and qualifications is there's in-class time, which is this, head knowledge, knowledge, read, study, read, answer questions. And then they say you got to have thousands of hours, five, six, seven, whatever it is. I don't know how many thousand. And what's that? That's the practical work, working of this. Same it is with you and I. Amen? Church time, this is, the, this is the knowledge time. And hopefully the Holy Spirit will touch your heart and give you some answers for some of the challenges and problems you're facing in life. And why is this happening? You know, is it on the other side of verse 12? Sin, outworking, consequences? Or is it just God putting you through a trial? The best people face the hardest trials. Think of Job. Think of Job this morning. Amen? Man, I'll tell you, the Bible says he was perfect and he eschewed evil. You know, and God put him through the fire. He put him through the fire. Man, I'll tell you, wow, wisdom. And he says this, let him ask of God, amen, to receive wisdom. You say, okay, God, I don't understand everything. God, help me understand this, amen. And, and again, the bottom line is God's trying to produce patience in you. Patience, and we, like I said, we can all use that patience, amen? And by the way, when you come to God, he says there in that verse that he abradeth not. He doesn't scold you. He's not upset, amen? And I, I like to use this for the parents, and I know sometimes kids nag, and I, they shouldn't do that and so forth, but at the same time, you know what? Listen, when you go to God, you're not nagging him. You need God's help. You're going through a trial right now in your life. God says, come on now. I want to help you, you know. So you say, I, I don't see your purpose, God. I, I don't know why this is going on. I really don't. I don't know. Amen. So God says, ask, ask, amen, ask. And so that's what we need to do here, you know. So trials, trials. Do we have the right response? Do we resist uh, the wrong spirit and the wrong attitude, amen? He says, if you lack wisdom, amen, ask of God, amen, amen? So he says, pray for help right away, amen? It's not just a prayer just for wisdom in general, in context, but you could take that and say, I need more wisdom. But in context of this, what is it? It's a prayer uh, to pray to ask God. You want to see the test from God's perspective, because from here, we're looking through a class darkly, 1 Corinthians 13 tells us. I don't understand and see, and you know, I know what we all say. Oh, you know, someday, you know, the songwriter will we'll understand it better by and by. We're not even going to ask those questions in heaven. We're going to have complete understanding. We'll, we'll just know it. We're not going to say, hey, Lord, I want to ask you a question about something that happened down on planet Earth. Not happening. 
Amen. But that's how we per perceive this. But what we got to do is say, God, help me see this the way you see it, God. I want to see what you see, Lord. I, I don't see this. I don't understand this purpose that you got in this whole, this whole trial that I'm facing. Lord, please help me see this. God, give me the wisdom to see what you see and what you're doing in my life and your purpose and plan for my life. I don't fully understand and comprehend it. And then he says in verse 6, but let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. And he uses the water, a lake, an ocean, amen. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So if you waver in this, how do you expect God to answer this prayer that you just you know, brought to God? No, no. And a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So let's look at these verses 6 through 8. So ask in faith, nothing wavering. That's what he says in verse 6, amen? Ask in faith, ask for wisdom, amen? Um, it must be made like every other request that we have. We got to do it, amen? Without, do without doubting God's ability or desire to give us the wisdom. Don't doubt God's ability. Please don't doubt God. That doubting God doesn't come from uh, how can I say it? it? It comes from the flesh. We just, we've got to trust God. We've got to trust him. I don't understand, and I don't see. Pray. Pray. Don't waver. Amen? Don't waver. I like Hebrews eleven six. 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Do you believe he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him? The problem is we're not diligent in this exercise as we go through the trial of life and the testings of life. We don't turn to God. Maybe we grumble. Maybe we complain to God and say, God, I don't like this, and I don't, boy, God, I'm, and maybe we get upset at God. And boy, I tell you, in all the years that I've been saved since 1974, I think I can't keep track. I don't try to keep track of people that have quit on God, gotten away from the Lord, because they miss, they, they, they just didn't understand God, and things happen. Amen? God allowed it to happen. We don't understand it all. Amen? But he says, nothing wavering. Amen? He says, it's like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Amen. You feel like that sometimes in life? Man, it's like, man, what? Up and down and all this stuff. And, you know, we've had three lockdowns and here we go. Who knows what else is coming? Amen. Up and down in life and problems and health problems and financial problems. And it goes on and on. A wave of a sea. Amen. It's a fitting description of one who's hindered by unbelief or unnecessary doubts. A wave of, of the sea is without rest. So is the one who doubts. A wave of the sea is unstable. So is the one who doubts. A wave of the sea is driven by the winds. So is the one who doubts. The wave of the sea is capable of great destruction. So is the one who doubts. Don't doubt God. If Listen, can you trust God? I don't understand everything. I don't. I don't but I don't want to turn my back on God. I don't, listen, I don't want to get angry at God. Oh, I don't understand everything that takes place. I, you know, people ask me questions sometimes. I see people in their lives dealing with circumstances that I've never even come close to experiencing. I say, Lord God, help me help them to understand. Don't doubt God. Don't doubt God. God is good. God is good. Amen. He's, he's good. Don't doubt God. Don't doubt God this morning. Amen. And the Bible says if you're, if you're like that wave, you're, you're unstable. You're unstable, and God doesn't want that, amen? You know, you know you, the, the doubt is, that, is like, you know, people try to get on the middle ground, so to speak, amen? Sit on the fence between faith and unbelief. That's double-mindedness. You don't need that. You can't be there, amen? A double-minded man, someone who wants his or her own will and God's at the same time. How about that? And then we go into another section, verses 9 through 11. We're coming down the home stretch here. So now he thinks, so, so see, see how God gave us this chapter? This is amazing, amazing chapter. So he talks about the trials. I didn't spend any time on the first verse. I just got right into the meat of the message here, verses 2 and, and through 4. So he gives you this Verses 5 and 6, he says, now listen, I want to help you. I want to help you, but what do you got to do? If you don't see his purpose, you don't understand his purpose, call on.
on me. Come on now. Call on me. Amen? And, and, and verses 5 through 8, amen? And then now, we're, here we are, we're getting down to verses 9, 10, and 11. So what's going on there, preacher? Did you know that trials happen to the rich and the poor? Everybody. You say, I don't know about those rich. You don't realize. You know, <laughs> some of the richest people have the greatest battles. They got so much to care for. And someone may say, hey, preacher, what God would try me out on that money deal? <laughs> you know, whether you're rich or poor, trials are for both. Doesn't matter where you are financially, what your status is. Look at verse 9. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Verse 10, but the rich in that he's made low. So he says, you know, if you're a low degree, rejoice in your exalted. But in the rich in that he's made low. You should rejoice, <laughs> either or. Because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. You know, the grass, the grass, the flowers. Amen? I was thinking about those um, uh, lady slippers. You know, they're like, there's a, they're kind of an endangered species, so to speak, of plants or something. I, I printed something up here, you know, and, and we have one of those species, and I think it's, there's different names, and I didn't realize we had other. It's called the pink lady slipper, but there's also a yellow lady slipper, a showy lady slipper. I didn't realize that. And the other one that's really rare is the ram's head lady slipper. I never knew that. And it's, they show on a map outside of Halifax area. You got to go towards uh, in Hans County up there, and they got them up there, and they got them over by Amherst and up in that way, and uh, Oxford and so forth. So, but you know what? They flower for a short period of time, and they take a long time to come to maturity. I was reading some of those things there, and then we watch, and we look, and I got some pictures on the camera. We went to Shuby Park, and I got those, and you know, and you're not supposed to, you're supposed to leave them alone, don't touch them, and so forth, and all that kind of stuff, you know, and, uh, but they will fade away. They don't last forever. It's like with all flowers. We've had some hot weather um, in the early part of this week, really hot. I mean, on the Fahrenheit scale, it was a little over 100 degrees uh, with the humidex, and, and all of a sudden, bang, uh, what was it T Thursday morning, cold, 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 and I look at some of our flowers, oh no, are they okay, are they okay? <laughs> some of our plants, are, ah! you know, we have these different, my wife knows all the names, I have no clue, I have no clue half the names of these things. Amen. But it's going to disappear. It'll pass away. Verse 11, for the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass and the flower thereof falleth. Amen. See, so, so you think, wait a minute, God's trying to give us encouragement by us to us that we're affected by trials. Look at the plants. Look at the flowers. Heat and sun. All this stuff's going on. God says, I like that song. There's a song. I remember a lady in our church in Niagara Falls, she used to sing it all the time, and she said, Consider the Lilies. Oh, I love that song. What a precious song. Amen. She'd sing that song, and wherever she did, I meant you just say, Consider. God says, Consider the Lilies. Consider the lilies, amen. They don't toil or spin. Come on, consider. God says, hey, consider the grass. <laughs> It'll pass away, amen. What are you going through? It, and it came to pass, and it came to, how many times you've heard that, read that in the Bible? And it came to pass, and it came to pass, amen. It will pass, it will pass, amen. And he says in ver, end of verse 12, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth, so also shall the rich man fade in his ways, Amen. Boy, I tell you, do you know what happens? Trials benefit both groups, the rich and the poor. Trials remind the poor that they're rich in the Lord. <laughs> Amen. How about that? And therefore, they cannot lose anything. And it, trials remind the rich that they dare not live for riches or trust in it because they'll go like that. Your portfolio could disappear tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not prophesying. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you, they can go away just like that. Amen. Well, I tell you, some people have lost a lot of stuff in the last year or so. Hey, man, I'm telling you, stock market's kind of all over the place and all this kind of stuff. Amen. Well, listen, let's wrap up on verse 12, and then we're going to sing one song here at the end here, a song that's really touched my heart, and I'll say a few words about it. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but verse 12, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised them to them that love him. 
Blessed is the man. It sounds like one of the Beatitudes, amen, in Matthew chapter 5, verse chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, amen. We mentioned some of that in the last message or two. Amen, you're blessed, you're blessed, amen. Statements of blessing. And, and, and James has some of those. He's got, you know, he's got a little bit of that in there about blessed. Blessed is, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, amen. He didn't say blessed is the man who's never tempted. He says blessed is the man that endureth temptation, Amen. We're all going to face temptations, whether it be on the trial side of things or the temptation to sin. doesn't matter. We're going to face either side. Amen. We're going to face both. He's when he is tried. So what is for when he is tried, the Bible says. Amen. So in other words, God got that purpose in allowing temptation. What is he trying to do? He's trying to put that dokimos on the bottom of the pottery. Amen. He doesn't, you don't have to crack up here. Amen. We want no cracks. No cracks at all. Amen. You can do it through Christ. You're saved in Christ. You can do that. Amen. You can get through it. You can. You can. Amen. The Lord promised us that. And then the Bible says there um, that the temptation, these various trials that we read about in verse 2, amen, these, these diverse temptations there. And he says, you know what? You can persevere through temptation. You can be rewarded at the end of this. Amen. You say, listen, I, I'm struggling in this, but I'm going to keep on trusting you, God. God, you're still good. God, I made you understand. God, I've even come to you in prayer, even as your word says, to ask of you if you lack wisdom. God, I don't have I'm, I don't know, wisdom on this area, this trial, this testing, whatever it is. Amen. And he says this, he'll reward those who love him, who love him. Amen. We read Abraham this morning with Isaac. God says, hey, you passed the test, Abraham. You, you showed that you, you are willing to offer your only begotten son, even as a pic, beautiful picture of Christ on the cross, amen, and offered him. And he says, you passed the test. I'm going to bless you. He talks about blessing and blessing and blessing in chapter 22. Praise God. Man, I'll tell you, boy, what an amazing, amen. So listen, when it comes down to the end, you, if you really love God, just say, God, help me not to doubt you, God. God, I don't understand every God, give me wisdom, amen. Whatever the trial is and the test is, amen, amen. And I, I'm going to read this verse to you, and then we're going to get, get a, a Sister Amanda to come up here, and I'll just say a few words. Some of you know Ron Hamilton, Ron Hamilton, amen. And I'm telling you, it's been heartbreaking to see what's been going on in his life. You know, I guess, I, I think it was when he was 62, I stand to be corrected, he started some onset of this dementia that he's been facing, and this past week here, his wife finally had said, you know what, there's only so much, there's only, you know, and people, family and friends are trying to advise, and they said, you know what, it's time, it's time for him to go into an enhanced care situation, and that's where he's in right now, and what an amazing man, God's used him in such a great and mighty way, you know, if I'm not mistaken, I think he was married to his wife Shelly in 1975, and within three years of their marriage, he was diagnosed with cancer in his eye. In three years. In three years. And went through that trial in life. And then in 20, so many other things took place. I'm not trying to give you a detailed uh, elaboration of all these things. In 2013, his son uh, tragically died. After years of struggle with mental illness, committed suicide. I, I have a copy of the funeral. I watched the whole funeral. Talk about breaking your heart. It happened on Mother's Day after he cooked a wonderful meal for his mom. Oh boy, I'm telling you some of the things. And uh, Shelley Hamilton wrote a big long thing this past week. And you know, I, I, I won't read it all to you, but if you can connect with her, you can just hit follow on her page. You need to read that. If that don't bring tears to your eyes, I don't know. There's something wrong with you. There really is. There really is. God's used this man in an amazing way. And I don't understand his purpose. I really don't. I don't understand all of that. I can't imagine, amen, his wife and what she's going through right now. And the challenges in that hard decision to do this, amen. Boy, I tell you, it's been a challenge here. But you know what? He's been a real blessing. And you know what? I, I don't know what the future is, but we know this. Praise God, he's saved, amen. God has used him great. And I believe what he's done will last for generations till Christ comes back. I know that, amen. You know what? You're never, ever wasting your life. you never, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So I look at that and I say, wow, what a trial. 
Amen. And you know what? So many others have faced trials. You know, our family, some of our family members have faced great trials. You have, I'm sure. I'm sure you can elaborate all of those things. But I know whatever it is, I want to do this. We're going to sing Rejoice in the Lord. So I'll get my daughter to put it on that microphone. And I'm just going to get the songbook. I think that I have it up here. Just, or here it is. And uh, we'll sing this song this morning. And uh, I want you to think of the words. And the words of this song are based upon Job 23 10. If you know anything about Job, he faced the trials. Amen? Just think of this. Let me just, I won't read. I just want to share some of the trials that he faced in, in uh, Job here. And let me just read this to you. I wrote, I wrote all these down. Tri trials and testing. He lost his family, his possessions, financial reversal, personal health problems, criticisms from his wife, and his friends turned on him. He went through so much, lost all his kids. He said, well, he got them back, not the same ones. He lost, it's still a loss, still a loss in life, amen? And so there's others. So in that verse, you know, after Ron had faced this challenge with cancer, amen, you know, he had to wear that patch, and people says, oh, they say, you look look like a pirate. And everybody said, so he kind of took on that thing, patched the pirate, amen. And there's a whole long, so much so more to this. But in Job chapter 23, verse 10, he says, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. So that gave the inspiration for Ron Hamilton to write the song that we're going to sing this morning. So we can get that on the screen there, if you got it on the screen. We'll sing this. Oh, 
Be with the Hamilton family. Be with those who are facing challenges, Lord God, in their life today. Help them, Lord. Help all of us to look to you, to trust in you, Lord. God, you're a great God. You've given us everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. Help us, Lord God, to ask for that wisdom, to put that knowledge into practice, Lord God, to apply it. So God, again, comfort and strengthen each and every one, whatever their trials are, Lord, and their testings, help them to see, help them to look to you, help them not to doubt in you. Now, Father, we ask you today, Lord God, to be with those, Lord God, that are not saved, help them to open their eyes and their heart to you. Lord God, maybe you're trying to get their attention today, whatever it is. Oh, God, do a great work. And Lord, we'll look to you, we'll trust you, and we'll thank you. For we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.